Hello, my name is Mark Smith, and welcome to our series on getting started with inductive position sensors. Today, we're going to talk about our two new products for your prototype system. There are nano kits. One is a rotary, 180 degree rotary nano kit, and one is a 50 millimeter linear kit. And these are great. We're going to show how these can really speed up your sensor system development. Now, the first box, I'm going to just go ahead and open it up here, is our rotary kit. You can see that it has a, a packaging and along with cable. Um, and then you can see how this is combined. They're called nano kits because what we've done is we've taken our LXM9518 programmer, we've taken one of our rotary sensors, and we've combined it all onto one simple board here. It doesn't do everything that the programmer does, but for many of our applications, it's a great place to start. In addition, I got a 150 millimeter linear design, which is shown right here. Here's, a, here's the target, and then here is the for our linear target, and then we have um, the board, and we put this on right there. Okay, so we have our 50 millimeter linear sensor combining both together our nano kits. Let me show you exactly how this will go. So I've gone ahead and taken one of the USB cables and plugged it into a 5 volt source, or in this case a computer, and let me go ahead and power up our little nano kits. You'll indicate right away there's an LED indicator light right here. There's a couple of LED lights that are there that are shown in the user guide. But as I move this back and forth, immediately you can see that this thing is operating because those LEDs are um, describing or lighting up as I hit different quadrants of the 360 electrical degrees that correspond to the measurement range of this 50 millimeter sensor. Um, remember, this nano kit is a combination of a PIC 18F microcontroller that's inside our LXM9518 and our sensor combined all into one um, small little device. And so that microcontroller is being able, eventually, I'll pull up the IPC software and we'll have interface to that software, but standalone, it will drive these LED lights um, for this little application. In addition to that, for your application, you might be able to use that and repurpose it for something else. Now, let me go ahead and show you the same thing on our rotary sensor. So it's plugged in, and you can immediately just turn the, the wheel here, and you can see the lights are moving there, showing the same thing over on this system for this 180 degree rotary sensor. Okay, let me go ahead and start the software and we'll see how this looks when um, the uh, when the IPC software is running. So I've went ahead and started the, our IPC software and you can imagine that you can see that nothing's attached to it. As soon as I plug in this power to the connector to our IPC connector here, um, you can see up on the screen, It'll take a few seconds, and it detected that a linear sensor board was added to the system. Um, and one of the advantages of the nano kits is that we can take full, we can look at all three outputs of the sensor. So up in the live stream um, capability, we have our PWM, and the live update section of the IPC, we have our PWM, we have our sent output, and we have our DAC output. And as I move this target back and forth, you can see those indicators that are shown right there, along with the lights down, once again, are moving. Um, and then you can go over to the demo tab, and this is quite interesting, quite nice. And you can see that as I, as I move this back and forth, uh, the screen also shows a representation of the target. It knows where it is. Um, and this is a smart communication device. So great for you to start out and, and start your solution. Now that we've attached our nano kit to the IPC software through the computer setting, you can use the same videos, the instruction videos that we did on the standalone device with the nano kit. All of those same capabilities are there. If you go to the settings tab, you can go ahead and adjust these outputs as you see fit. Let's say we want, you know, uh, IO3 to be, um, or IO2, we want this to be PWM and IO1 to be ascent. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We can just do that right now. Go over here, hit program the chip, and you can see that things get changed around. 
Um, and that's great for the settings tab. Um, you can adjust other things for your particular sensor application. If you want to use this in an application and you want to modify some of the special outputs, you can go that in the settings area. In addition, over in the measurement area, once again, you have the debug button. As I press that button, you can see now we have the raw signals that are inside the sensor. We have the sine and cosine signals, we have the oscillator output, and we have our output signal, and then there's an indicator of radiuses. And once again, you, you go over the range and you make sure that we don't see any faults, and we have a fault indicator right here. Um, so that's all available um, within this measurement. If you want to go ahead and do calibration with this, you can. You can just start capturing data as we talked about before. Um, and then you can bring this over to our analysis tab and you could do some post calibration. Although it comes calibrated um, for this particular sensor, you could do some additional calibration. And one of our videos talks about how you can use an external microcontroller so similar to this PIC-18F to go ahead and actually do um, an additional calibration to get even more accuracy. So all the tools that you've done before on a standalone devices are now along with the Nano Kit. Okay, I have a few new things on my lab bench. I have a power supply, a 5 volt power supply here, and a multimeter. And I've disconnected the USB cable away from here. And now what I'm doing is I'm powering this sensor right from this 5 volt supply. See, there's through this J2 connector. Now, this is set up really nicely with the Nano Kit, and that's the really purpose of this J2 connector. Once you've customized the sensor for your particular end application, you could go ahead and now use it as a, a sensor itself and for prototyping systems. And in this case, I'm going to be powering it from 5 volts, and I'm no longer going to be using that microcontroller for anything in the system other than it's just sitting there at this stage where I'm, I'm using this power supply, the power supply here to power that sensor. Now I've attached J2 and I've to J2 I've attached, there is a ground, there's VN and there's IO1, IO2, IO3 and IO4 and I've attached my multimeter to IO3 which was our analog output and it's reading 3.1, about 3.18 volts. I've applied 5 volts and as you can see as I move this target back and forth the analog voltage is going back and forth. And I could hook this now up to another microcontroller in my system. Maybe I want to hook it up to other circuitry. Great for prototyping systems. The one thing to note is that when we were communicating between the, the PIC-18F and the microcontroller, we were using a mode and programming it that way. We're using a mode called Digital EE Mode. It's a SPI-based communication that allows us to do programming and calibration of the sensor right from 5 volts only using an SPI interface. The other types of mode that we use to calibrate and program this sensor is using the VNEE mode. And that needs high voltage circuitry because it's a great, is using power line communication and sending ones and zeros between 12 volts and 18 volts. And that's why we would need a uh, the LXM 9518 for those particular cases. But in an embedded application where you have a 5 volt supply that's running both your microcontroller and your sensor, or you have 3.3 volts that's running the microcontroller and 5 volts running the sensor, you can use this digital EE mode to do that programming. And this Nano Kit is a great example that shows you how that works. Um, in addition to this, is that you can see right now in the system that PIC-18F is, is just not being utilized after I've done my calibration and learning and, 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 and talking through our IPC software. This is a great way that we could use a PIC kit, in this case a PIC kit 3, with the appropriate header. This is not the quite connect, right connector, we, but it's designed to plug in and program through this J3 connector. And now we can repurpose that PIC-18F to be the maybe the central brain in your sensor system development. Um, and this is a great example to get you started on that journey of not only utilizing um, inductive position sensors along with the, you know, the, the advantages here, but now putting it into a, a microcontroller system that gives you your whole system development so you have fast time to market. And so you can do that through your PIC Kit 3. I hope you enjoyed this 
a brief overview of our 50 millimeter linear nano kit and our 180 degree rotary nano kit.